Hey everyone, and welcome back to the latest episode from Just The Basics, the channel where we don't worry about flashy intros, we just get straight to business. Cue the intro. Welcome back everyone, in today's video we're going to look at creating this cinematic text effect inside of Blender 2.82a. <gasps> that was a mouthful. And of course, the links for all the assets and textures we'll use will be in the description, so you can download them for free. And they're all CC0 materials, which is amazing, thanks to an awesome 3D CG community. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. We're going to want to make sure we're running the latest version of Blender, which is currently 2.82a. And let's hit File, New, New General Project. First of all, let's add in some text. We can hit Shift A to add in text and hit RX90 to stand that up vertically. Now let's navigate to our font settings which is symbolized logically by this A which stands for a font setting. The first thing we're going to need to do is under paragraph we're going to set our alignment from horizontal left to horizontal center. That will center our text nicely. Now let's go to our geometry and set the extrude depth from 0 to 0 0.08. This will give it a nice bit of 3D depth and just the right amount for what I'm looking for. Now, I'm not very happy with this font, so I'm going to import my own. It's called the bold font. There'll be a link for it in the description. So once you've downloaded that, you can navigate into the font settings and just under regular, select this little file and go to where you've saved it and then double click it to import it. There we go. Excellent. I should add too that if you want to change your text, you can hit tab to enter edit mode and then backspace to delete what's already there. Now feel free to type your cinematic logo for your YouTube channel or perhaps your film title here. I'm pretty happy with uh, text, I felt like that was pretty original and creative so I'm just going to keep that there for the moment. Let's set the fill mode on this from both to none. That means that there'll be no fill on either the front or back face of our text. We'll explain why we're doing this in just a moment but first let's hit shift D to duplicate our mesh. Now we we'll just left click to make sure it doesn't move at all and then on our second text we're going to set the fill mode from none back to both. And uh, you're probably wondering why on earth we did that. If we select our outer edge we can set the bevel depth from 0 to 0 0.1 and this is going to give our text a nice defined outer edge. Now make sure you're happy with what you have written there because once we take the next step you will not be able to change your text. Well, easily, that is. So just review it for a moment, and if you're happy, we can continue on to the next step. Let's select our text and hit right click, and then convert to mesh. And do the same for our outer edge. Select it, then right click, convert to mesh. The reason we're doing this is text does not have actual 3D data that we can unwrap and apply a material to correctly. So we need these objects to be meshes to be able to apply materials correctly to them. So let's get into applying some materials. To do that, we can split our view just by grabbing this top left hand corner and dragging to the right. Then let's select it one more time in the top left hand corner and this time drag it downwards to split this view in half as well. We'll set our top left hand corner view type to shader editor and hit N to remove that side panel and then select our bottom one and set it to UV editor. I find this an optimum working space inside of Blender but obviously you can organize it however you'd like. And before we add the materials let's just get our lighting set up nicely. So let's go to the world settings which is uh, symbolized by a picture of the world fittingly and let's go ahead and set our background color to an environment texture by selecting this little circle and under texture checking environment texture. Now let's go ahead and open and once again there'll be a link to this HDRI I'm using which is from HDRI Haven which is an amazing website and this one is called Miali Road. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. And let's just make sure our render engine is set to Eevee and we'll enable or we'll change our viewport shading mode to fully rendered just by clicking this little icon up here. Excellent. Now let's start adding some materials. 
I might do the outer edge first. So let's go ahead and hit this little new material icon. Zoom in a little bit. You see it's automatically added a principled BSDF shader, but we're gonna hit Shift A and add in some image textures. So let's just drop that down there and let's go ahead and connect color to base color. And this will be the main color of our image. Let's go open. And I'm using some textures from cc0textures.com. So this one is a metal 007 2K texture. I'm just gonna import that there. And now I'm going to duplicate this image texture another three times because there's three more maps we're gonna use. The first one we're going to need is going to be a metalness map. So let's go find that one. And that one is going to plug into the metallic slot on our principal shader. The next one is going to be a roughness map. So grab that and plug that into our roughness setting. And the final one is going to be a normal map, which will provide some nice bumps and small detail. And that will go into our normal setting. Now this isn't looking too great. That's because we need to make sure that all our non-color images are set in color space to non-color as opposed to RGB. That way they do not alter the color of our final material, I believe. So let's just change all them from sRGB to non-color just by selecting this little drop down box in color space. And it's still not looking great. That's because for our normal map, we need to add in one extra node so let's hit shift A and search for a normal map node. Now this acts like an interpreter for our normal map and it helps the material understand how to use the data in this normal map. There is our final material and it's looking good, except it's very much stretched on our text. So to unwrap it and project it properly, let's hit tab to enter edit mode, A to select all of our mesh and then U smart uv project and select ok now it's unwrapped it nicely into our little material there and i like to scale it up a little bit because you can see it's pretty zoomed in we've got the details the scratch is rather quite large so we can go to our uv editor hit a to select our entire image projection and then s to just scale that up i like scaling up quite a bit Obviously, you don't want to go too big because you'll start getting um, repetition, but something like that isn't too bad. Although, maybe I'll just scale it up a bit more. There you go. I'm very happy with that. Okay, that is our nice outer edge material. Now, let's select the inner fill and go ahead and hit new material. Once again, we're going to add in some image textures. So, let's just search image texture and then drop it in and connect color to base color. Let's go ahead and open up our second texture, which is plastic 001, link in the description again. And let's duplicate this two more times because there's only two more maps we need for this one. The second one is a roughness map. We'll connect that to roughness, set color space to non-color. And the final one is a normal map, which we will connect to normal and add in a normal map in between that and just set that color space from sRGB to non-color. Now, this is looking good, except it is not unwrapped properly at all. So let's once again, hit tab on our mesh, A to select all, then U, smart UV project, and okay. And I'll select this UV projection, hit A to select it all, and S to scale it up to make it a bit bigger as well. Tab to get out of edit mode. I think that looks really good. Let's change a few settings to get our render looking a bit nicer. I'm gonna enable ambient occlusion. Let's change that distance from 0.2 to 0.6. And then let's enable bloom, enable screen space reflections. And we'll, under film, we'll enable transparent background. Let's add some rotation and movement to our text now to give it a bit of a cinematic opening feel. What we'll need to do, hit tab to enter edit mode and then while in edit mode, hit P to separate by loose parts. This will separate them into individual letters for us, which will help us with our next step. Hit tab to get out of edit mode, and then select our outer edge, and hit tab to enter edit mode, and once again, hit P, separate by loose parts. Excellent. Now, we're gonna wanna go ahead and join the outer edge 
and the inner fill together for each individual letter. So starting with our first letter, we'll just drag and select that and then hit Control J to join that all together. Let's do the same with our second. Select that and hit Control J. And I'm just using this simple click and drag to select Control J. And you might find this little error message. It says active object is selected is not a mesh. So just go ahead and reselect that if that does come up. Click away and try again and it usually seems to work fine. So let's do that for our last one. Control J. Excellent. Now we'll click and drag to select all of these and right click and change the origin to origin to geometry. That'll just mean these will all have individual origin points, which will be their rotating point as well, which will come in handy now. So let's go ahead, select all one more time and go to frame 70 and hit I, which stands for insert keyframe menu and select location rotation scale. Now that's set a keyframe for all of these so that at frame 70, they're all going to be facing this way in 3D space. So let's set our in frame to 70, instead of 250, and go back to frame one in our little timeline and hit N to enable our toolbar, right hand side toolbar, and go to change it from view to item select. And let's set uh, select our first letter and you'll see that all these transform options are highlighted green. That means there's currently a keyframe set on all of them. Under rotation, that's the one we're interested in. We're gonna set the Z rotation to 90 degrees. And the same for the next letter, we'll select that, change it from zero to 90 degrees, and so on for the remaining letters in our title. Once we've done that, we can select all of them and hit I to insert a second keyframe on frame number one. And once again, I'm gonna select location, rotation, and scale. And you'll see we now have two keyframes. If we play that back, we have this nice rotating text effect, which I think is pretty cool. Now let's set up our camera. To do that, we can hit zero to enter camera mode. And while this toolbar is still open, if we go to view, we can select lock camera to view. Now we can just scroll in and then hold down shift in our middle mouse click to move around, pan around our view. And then holding control and middle mouse click we can zoom in a bit more. I like to start kind of in the center of the middle two letters and I'll select my camera and then hit I, insert keyframe, location, rotation, scale. Then I move to frame 70 and holding control and middle mouse click, I'll just pull back on my mouse and it'll allow me to zoom out. So maybe a bit more, that is pretty good. So I'll hit I to insert a second keyframe. And now if we play back, there we have our text rotating out nice and cinematically. But we need a background. So a simple trick I use to create a background is I go Shift A, add in a plane, and just rotate this on the X axis by 90 degrees. So that's RX90, enter. And then grab that on the Y by hitting G for grab, Y for Y axis. And let's scale that up just a little bit. Now I'll go over to our material properties and add a new material to this. And I like it to have a sort of ambient kind of blue and red mixture color effect to give it this kind of cinematic feel you see in all those great After Effects tutorials. So let's go ahead and hit Shift A and add in a gradient texture and drop that into base color. And you'll see it's now added this gradient from black to white. So to control this, let's add in a color ramp which will allow us to set what colors are the gradient. Now, it, cur it currently is going from left to right just by hitting R, Y, negative or sub minus nine zero, we can rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis to be going rather from left to right, bottom to top. And let's set our colors. I'll go ahead and uh, set black to something a bit lighter, but still pretty dark, a dark red, and then our white, by selecting that marker, I'll set to a dark blue. Something kind of like that, I'm pretty happy with. I might grab this red up so it leaks a bit more into our blue. 
And if you would like to have a bit of a glow from that color ramp, you can just grab the color and plug it into a mission as well, which is just down here on your principal shader. It will make your colors a bit lighter, so you might need to darken them a little bit so they're not too oversaturated. So I'll just select those markers and darken that a little bit. But once again, it's up to your personal preference. A few other things I like to do under my camera settings, I like to change the focal length of the lens from 50 mil to 35. I find it's just a little bit more cinematic for me. And I also like to set my resolution from full HD to 4K. So I can do that. And if you like to do that, just set your resolution X from 1920 to 3840 and your resolution Y from 1080 to 2160. That's now 4K. And I might just need to scale up this background a little bit just so my camera fits it all in the screen. And one final thing I do like to experiment with is the rotation of these letters. Currently, they're all rotating to the left at the same speed. But if we just select our every second letter, we can maybe have a bit more fun with this. So let's set that item. And instead of having it start at 90 degrees on the Z axis, let's just put a little um, negative symbol in front of that and change it to negative 90 degrees. Let's do the same for our last letter. Change that to negative 90 degrees. And then we'll insert a keyframe for those. And now what happens is our letters turn to meet each other. And I find that's kind of like a bit of a cool look, something a little bit um, more interesting to watch perhaps. And of course, before you render it, you might want to enable motion blur. I think that's about it for this tutorial, everyone. Thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed it and had a bit of fun creating your own cinematic logo. Of course, feel free to use whatever materials you like and experiment a little bit. Have a bit of fun. Thanks for watching. We hope you have a great day and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.